Hello everyone. Microsoft has finalized the retirement date of Azure unmanaged desk. And after September 30, 2025, all the virtual machines which are running unmanaged disk will be stopped or delocated. As you can see, this is the screenshot from the announcement. And it is the high time that you should start planning the migration of your unmanaged disk to the managed disk to prevent any business impact. In this video, first I'll discuss all the prerequisites before the migration and then the task which should be done after the migration is done. And finally, a step-by-step -step lab demo where I'll show the migration of the virtual machine using unmanaged disk to the managed disk. So let's start with the prerequisites. There are five different prerequisites before you start the migration. First one is that you have to ensure that the virtual machine is in healthy state. Check for any extension or the agents, whether they are in successful state or not, because any failed agent or extension can disrupt the migration process. And the second prerequisite is that you need to plan this migration because during the migration, the virtual machine restarts. So that's why you need to schedule the downtime for those virtual machines. Third, so this is a default prerequisites before any migration, it's recommended to take the backup of the virtual machine in case something goes south so that you can recover or restore the virtual machine from the backup. Fourth point is to check whether the static IP is assigned to the network interface card of the virtual machine. And the reason is because during the restart process, the virtual machine gets deallocated and there is a possibility that the IP address will change if it's dynamic instead of static. And the last prerequisite is to check whether the virtual machine is a part of availability set. Because the availability set created with the unmanaged disk do not support managed disk. So before the migration, you need to first convert the availability set to the availability sets who support managed disk and then do the actual migration of the virtual machine disk. And once you have done all the checks of the prerequisites, then you are ready to do the migration either using the PowerShell or the portal. And in this video, I'll show the migration using the portal. And once the migration is done, there are certain post migration tasks which are recommended to be performed. First one is to reclaim all the older disk as well as the storage account. So once the migration is done, old disk as well as the storage account are not deleted. And that's your responsibility to reclaim all those disks. Otherwise they will keep incurring the cost. Second one, which is most important is right size the disk. So this is the main difference between unmanaged disk and managed disk. So during the creation of unmanaged disk, you just provide the size. For example, if I have created a data disk of two terabyte, however, I'm just using 500 GB. So in that case, one and a half terabyte is not in use. And this was one of the feature of the managed disk that you will be charged only for the storage, which you use. However, if you'll do the like to like migration where you convert two terabyte unmanaged disk into managed disk. So in that case, you will be charged for the two terabyte of the managed disk because in managed disk, you are charged for the size, not for the utilization. So that's why before the migration, you need to log in into the virtual machine and check how much the utilization is there. If you think there is an over provisioning being done in the older disk, then the suggestion is after the migration, shrink those disks first in the operating system and then at the disk level. And this will save you from any bill shock. And the last one is to choose the appropriate disk type. In the managed disk, you can choose multiple performance levels. Based on your requirement, after the migration, you can change the performance level of your disk. And using that, either you will do the cost optimization or or performance optimization for your virtual machine. So that was all the detail about the migration from unmanaged disk to managed disk. So let me now show the step-by-step -step migration process in the lab. I'm logged into Azure portal now. And if I'll go to the virtual machines, I have two virtual machine test VM 001 and test VM 002. And both these virtual machines are using unmanaged disk. As soon as you will go to the virtual machine, you can see this message that test VM 001 is not using managed disk and you can migrate it from here. And if I'll go to settings to the disk, there are two unmanaged disk. 
one is 30 GBs, another one is one terabyte disk. The difference between two virtual machines is, so one virtual machine is without availability set, which is 001, and the another virtual machine, which is 002, it's deployed in the availability set. So if we'll scroll down, you can see it's deployed in the availability set. So let's start with the prerequisites first. Check the virtual machine status. Is there any error or if we'll go to extensions, there are no extensions right now, but those should be successful state. In our case, because this is a lab virtual machine I have recently created, so there are no errors here. Another one is to plan the migration so that you can schedule the dine time. Third one is to take the backup of the virtual machine. So if we'll go to the virtual machine, click on backup. And there you can create a new recovery service vault and use an existing one. I don't have any recovery service vault. So just create the vault and the backup policy and the virtual machine as well as data disk will be backed up. So I'm not enabling the backup, but you can enable it from here. If you'll click here first, it will create a recovery service vault, add the virtual machine to the recovery service vault and take the backup of it. However, initial backup will run at 8 AM UTC time, but you can run it manually before the migration, which is highly recommended. Another one is to make sure that your virtual machine has a static IP. So if you'll go to network interface, And in the IP configuration, it's showing as dynamic. In my case, it's a lab. And if the IP address changes, it doesn't matter to me. But if you want to make sure that your IP address doesn't change after the migration, then you can just go to IP config and just change it to static and save it. I have provided the public IP address here, but mostly in the production environment, the public IP address on the virtual machine is never recommended. And the last one is to check whether the virtual machine is deployed in the availability set. Because we, you have to first convert the availability set to support the managed disk and then do the migration. So now let's go to virtual machine 001 and start the migration. There is no availability set here. So the migration will be straightforward. If you'll click here. So it's saying that the source managed unmanaged disk will not be deleted. So you have to delete them after the migration. So if we'll just click on migrate and start stopping the virtual machine and copy the data from the virtual hard disk, which are in storage account to the new managed disk and then attach it to the virtual machine and then bring it up. And one thing to note is the configuration of your virtual machine will not be changed in this migration process. Only the disk will be changed from unmanaged to managed. So if you want to make any configuration changes to the virtual machine, you can do it post migration. So the virtual machine is stopped now and it's migrating the virtual machine. So while it's taking its own time, we can go to another virtual machine and check what happens if it's deployed into availability set. So same process. If you'll go to virtual machine, it's saying it's not using the managed disk. So let's migrate it. However, you will get a message. The availability set doesn't support virtual machine with managed disk. So you have to convert it. Click on this message. And there are two fault domains and convert. And now availability set is successfully converted to support the managed disk. And the next step is super easy. Just click on migrate. It will stop the virtual machine and then start migrating the virtual machine. So I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the migration of both the virtual machines are done. It took few minutes and both the virtual machines are successfully migrated now. Let's go to test VM001 first. And it's running right now. Its status is running. And if we'll go to the disk, it's showing the 30 GB premium SSD LRS, which is managed disk. And the another one is one terabyte managed disk. And if I'll go to virtual machine 002, it's also running. 
and there is only one OS does. So let's quickly connect to virtual machine one. Copy the public IP address. And perfect, I'm able to log in. And if I'll do df hyphen h, so I can see the different file system. Let's run mount hyphen a. So let's create a mount point. And it's mounted now. Oh, sorry, mount hyphen A. And if we'll do DF hyphen H, so you can see, so one terabyte data disk is assigned. And only 31 GB is in use. And this is the reason why I wanted to inform you about the right sizing. So now, because you're using the managed disk, you will be paying for the one whole terabyte. However, previously you were just paying for 31 GBs. So you can shrink the disk from the operating system level. You can shrink the disk from here, use it either 128 GB, because if you're just using 31 GB and you estimate the potential growth, you can use 128 GB and reclaim rest of it. And then you can shrink the disk from the managed disk level. And this is how you can right size your disk. And now if you'll go to the disk, these are premium SSDs. But based on a performance, if you'll go to size and performance, you can change the storage type, whether you want SSDs, HDDs. And this is how you can optimize either the performance or the cost. If you are downgrading the storage type, then you are optimizing the cost. If previously it was HDD and you want to change it to SSD, then it will be your performance optimization. So to summarize the video, if you have unmanaged disk lying in your environment, then this is the high time you should plan their migration. And once you will plan the downtime and go through the prerequisites, you can migrate these virtual machines to the managed disk. And to optimize your environment, it's recommended to either right side or change the configuration of the disk. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.